Today I'm out in Utah. I'm just about to drive the new Nissan Pathfinder, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the new all-electric Ford F-150 because Ford has just dropped a whole ton of information in my inbox and the embargo is about to release, so I'm not being able to film this in my usual uh, setting. And I'm also not going to edit this quite as heavily, so definitely let me know how you feel about that down there in the comment section below. Instead, let's just read through the release, go through the footage that they've sent, and talk about why I think this is the biggest electric vehicle news really in the last several years or so. Now, the first and most important thing is the price tag of the new electric F-150 that they're going to call the F-150 Lightning. It's going to start at $39,974. That is quite a bit less than the Rivian truck that I actually have on pre-order. And I have to say that I am really, really excited about this F-150. And I also have to admit that I might cancel my Rivian order and just order one of these. That base model is what Ford is calling a commercial-oriented base model. If you want the mid-series XLT trim, that's going to be $52,794. And of course, they're going to be more expensive and more feature-rich versions after that. As far as power, Ford says that the F-150 Lightning will get 563 horsepower total, 775 horsepower combined, depending on the model that you get. Of course, the numbers will change a little bit here. And 0 to 60 times should be somewhere around 4.4 to 4.5 seconds. It'll also have a maximum of 2,000 pounds of payload capacity in the standard model and 10,000 pounds of available towing capacity in the upper level model. Now, let's go through some of the data that they've given us so far. They did not give me complete specs. In fact, Ford has said that they may not actually end up giving out complete detailed battery specs. I'm a little bit surprised by that, but remember that not all electric vehicle manufacturers, uh, especially vehicle manufacturers like Tesla, they don't really tell you anymore about how big the battery is in their models. So just a quick run through of the specification sheet here. It's going to have a five and a half foot bed. It's only going to come in one body style, Super Crew, four door, five and a half foot bed. It is going to be built in the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center. So it will be built in the United States. It's not going to be built in the same factory that's building the Mustang Mach-E. But obviously some of these components are likely closely related or at least distantly related to what we see in that new all electric Mustang, especially on the inside. We'll talk about that in a bit here. The interesting thing about this is that there are going to be two batteries. There's going to be a standard range battery. We don't know how big that is. It's probably over 100 kilowatt hours. My guess at this moment is right around 120 kilowatt hours capacity. Then there's going to be an extended range battery. My guess on that one, it's probably going to be around 160 to 170 kilowatt hours. But again, Ford has not detailed things specifically. Obviously, a lot of folks out there can do the math with some of the numbers that Ford's about to release, but I have not had the chance to do that. Uh, so I might take a stab at it a little bit later, but not at this moment. So two electric motors, 426 horsepower in the base model, 563 horsepower in the next level up. Both vehicles will give you 775 pound-feet of torque, though. It's also going to have two different chargers available. The base charger is pretty quick, 11.3 kilowatts. The up-level charger is going to be 19.2. So if you have access to an 80-amp charge station, then you can charge one of the fastest rates available in a new EV. But there's a little bit of a catch there in that you do have to have an electrical system in your home or your office that can support an 80 amp charge. That is quite a lot of power. Now, fortunately, Ford is going to be including an 80 amp charger in some trims of the F-150 Lightning. That's an interesting twist. Now, charge times, everybody's really concerned about charge times. So let's dive into this. According to Ford, if you have access to a newer level three CCS charge station, that's going to be one of the 150 kilowatt or faster units, the standard range battery will go 15% to 80% in 44 minutes, the extended range battery in 41 minutes. So even though it's bigger, it's going to go a little bit faster. Logically, these charge rates are pretty similar to what we see in the Mustang Mach-E, but this is a bigger battery. So it does not appear that this is going to charge as quickly as some of the next generation in 800 volt EVs out there. Ford has not said whether this is an 800 volt system, mind you. If you have access to a 240 volt EVSE, your charge rates will depend on the kind of EVSE that is. The vast majority of them out there at business and home locations across the US seem to be around 30 to 35 amps, somewhere in that neighborhood. But if you have one of the newer 40 amp or 48 amp, I should say, EVSEs, it will take 10 hours to go from 15% to 100%, 13 hours with the bigger battery pack. If you have access to one of the new 80 amp Ford charge stations, then it will only take eight hours in the extended range models. That is definitely quicker. If you're using the 32 amp mobile charger, as Ford calls it, this is a better indication of what it will 
take to charge if you are replacing your current EV with one of these new EVs and you have some of those 32 amp chargers out there. It'll take 14 hours with the standard range battery, 19 hours with the big battery. Remember, this is an enormous battery in order to be able to do the things that this Lightning can do. The base model will supposedly get you 230 miles of range. Remember that that is going to be all wheel drive, just like the big model. And the big one is gonna do 300 miles of range. Based on what we've seen out of the Mustang Mach-E, I would be willing to bet that these numbers are likely going to be a little bit conservative, especially compared to what we're gonna see out of Tesla if they ever release their pickup truck. Now, the Tesla Cybertruck is not traditional truck formatted. It's not shaped like a traditional truck. And this F-150 is basically an electric F-150. But if I were a betting man, I would say that even a Tesla with 50 or 75 miles more EPA rated range is likely going to be in a very similar ballpark to this new F-150. Now, as far as overall length, it's gonna be 232.7 inches long. They've actually gone, done, gone ahead and given us quite a detailed number of specifications here, which means it's gonna be basically the same length as every other F-150 out there. It's also gonna have 8.9 inches of ground clearance, just like most F-150s. But when we start digging under the surface, you'll notice that this is a very different kind of vehicle. We don't know exactly how much of the frame is shared with the current generation F-150. I would suspect that at least some design components are shared, but the vast majority appears to be different. Now in a body on frame vehicle like this, it makes sense that it looks just like a regular F-150, but then under the skin, it's not. Because we have a massive battery pack, but in a body on frame vehicle, there's a lot of wasted space in the frame area. When you crawl under the average pickup truck in America, there's a ton of room occupied by the gas tank, the differentials, the transmission, the transfer case, the solid axles, etc. And we don't have any of those in the F-150 Lightning. We have a motor unit in the rear, a motor unit in the front, and a fully independent suspension in the back. So a lot of room going on, not just for the battery pack, but also a huge cargo area up front because it doesn't have to be able to accommodate a five liter V8 and a 10 speed automatic transmission and all the cooling required to traditional ICE engine. Under the hood, we find a pretty decently sized cargo area. At 14.1 cubic feet, this is basically the same size as the average mid-sized sedan in the United States. So if you can fit it in a Toyota Camry's trunk, you will be able to fit it in the front trunk of the F-150. Targeted maximum payload is gonna be 2,000 pounds with a standard range battery. As you might expect, if you get the bigger battery, it will drop down. That's because the battery is heavier. It'll drop down to 1,800 pounds. Max towing, however, is better with the big battery at 10,000 pounds, and it falls a little bit with the standard range battery down to 7,700. At the moment, we know that there are gonna be three different trims, XLT, Lariat, and Platinum. They haven't given me any pricing details on the Platinum, but you can logically base the pricing scheme of this vehicle uh, off of the F-150, and just take a look at what a regular F-150 would be an XLT trim, adjust for feature content, and that will give you an idea of what those models will be priced like. One of the interesting touches with this vehicle is that it's gonna get basically the same feature set that we find in the rest of the F-150 lineup. So it's gonna have Ford's Copilot 360 system, their active safety setup. It's gonna have their Pro Power system that we find in their hybrid models. The standard version will be 2.4 kilowatts of inversion capability. It'll have 120 volt outlets in the cab, two in the bed, and four in the trunk. That's the front trunk, of course. And then the next level up, Lariat and Platinum, will come standard with the 9.6 kilowatt option with extra outlets, two in the cab, two in the bed, four in the trunk, plus a 240 volt outlet in the bed. That 240 volt outlet will be good enough to run your entire home for most Americans out there in the event of a power outage. And with a battery this big, you'll be able to run 24 to 48 hours depending on your electric usage. Now, more interesting than that is that Ford is going to offer you the ability to direct connect this to your home sort of in generator fashion directly from the factory. If you get the upper end models, the ones with the bigger battery pack, those are gonna be the ones with the standard Ford Charge Station Pro included in the vehicle. And that Ford Charge Station Pro is gonna be the one that will be able to feed power back to your home. They're calling that the Ford Intelligent Backup Power Capability. The power output of that system is roughly the same 9.6 kilowatts. For most folks out there, that will be just fine. I can run my heat pump. I live off the grid actually, but I could run my heat pump. I could run my well pump, my pressure pump, my septic system, uh, and use the oven all with that kind of power output capability. On the inside, the majority of the F-150's interior stays, including the max recline front seat option, but we do get some subtle tweaks here and there. The dashboard is not exactly the same. We get the big LCD instrument cluster that we find in the regular F-150, but 
instead of the F-150's more horizontal LCD, one that's a little bit shaped like this iPad right here, instead we get the bigger 15-inch screen from the Ford Mustang Mach-E, complete with volume knob down at the bottom. I have to say that Ford did a really good job of integrating that screen into the dashboard of the F-150. And I have to say, I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't just graft that screen into the rest of the lineup. It's possible that the hybrid or non-hybrid models of the F-150 lineup could get that screen at some later date. But I really appreciate the fact that they've inserted that into the dashboard. It's gonna make some of the functions of working around in Ford's sync system just a little bit easier than we see in the current generation of F-150. I like that particular layout a little bit more. This is also gonna get Ford's integrated scales app where it basically weighs the cargo and weighs your trailer. That is one of the best features that I think is out there in a modern pickup truck. Because for folks out there that are concerned about payload and hitch weight, you really ought to be concerned about these things if you're hauling and towing simultaneously. This takes all the guesswork out of it. It simply tells you how much weight is connected, whether you're over it or under it, and you don't have to worry about that particular part of towing or hauling anymore. Now on the downside, I have to say that we don't know exactly what fuel economy is going to be like when towing loads. You can logically expect range and economy to be cut absolutely in half if you're towing 10,000 pounds or more, especially if you're towing something that is relatively bulky. That's something that I've commented on here before. And that's where the slower DC fast charge rate of this system may offend some folks out there. I'll have to wait until I can get my hands on one of these to give it a thorough test. If it's gonna take you 44 minutes to get from 15% to 80%, and that 15% to 80% is only going to get you, say, 200 miles in the extended range battery under normal conditions, and say, uh, you know, 100 miles if you're towing something heavy, it's going to be a bummer to spend 40, 45 minutes every time you drive 100 miles with your trailer connected to it. Aside from the problem that at this moment, most CCS fast charge stations are simply not designed for vehicles with trailers connected. If you're doing a lot of long distance towing, I don't think this is going to be the right fit for you. But I have to say, if you're doing a lot of in-town towing and 95 to 99% of my towing is within 100 miles of home, I think this could be really, really a great option. Ford has not given me complete details about turning radius, etc., but I would hope that without an engine hanging out there in the engine bay, that this might be a little bit tighter turning than the current generation F-150. As always, let me know what you think about the F-150 down there in the comment section below. I'm really, really excited about the price tag of this vehicle. Yes, the base model is going to be more commercially focused, but Ford didn't say that you can't just run out and buy one, so I suspect folks will be able to order one. Now, if you want to order one, you can pre-order over at the Ford website right now. I might just end up there myself, at least for a long-term test, like we're doing with the Mustang Mach-E. The other thing to know is that if you're betting between this and the Tesla Cybertruck, remember that at this moment, the Cybertruck does not have any federal tax credits, and this F-150 Lightning will have the full $7,500 of credit on it. This is going to be a little bit bigger in terms of its general footprint than we see in the Rivian pickup truck. The Rivian pickup truck is really more of a mid-size truck, so if you're looking for something that's a bit more traditional, a bit more full-size, and a truck that is from a brand that builds other trucks, this could be the best option. And if you're simply looking for an inexpensive electric truck, that's gonna be this one as well. Because starting at around $40,000, less the $7,500 tax credit and additional state and local incentives, this could be just about the same price or a little bit less expensive even than some of the other pickup trucks that you might be looking at out on the market. Now, obviously this is not gonna get the crazy $10,000, $15,000 of cash on the hood like we find in a regular gasoline pickup truck. And that means that logically in the real world, this is still gonna be more expensive. But if you're the kind of person that just ends up paying MSRP for whatever you're buying, this could be pretty similar. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below. And of course, stay tuned because hopefully I will have my hands on one of these very, very soon. I'll see all of you later. <music>